Mora Surfside, welcome to our very first ever online church service. This is an exciting part of our journey as a church. Now clearly if you're, if you're online now, you've worked out how to do that. The service will be a little different to normal, so just be aware of that. For a start off, we won't be having any worship this week, but in a week or two we're going to get that organised as well. There will be things for the children. We've got something for all the different areas of the kids from Sparks, Little Lightning, Thunderbolts, and even the junior youth. There's, if, you, if you go on the uh, online page, you'll see there's a, a tab there for the kids area. So get onto that and enjoy it as a family. We're also going to be having a cu- communion time and a few other exciting things as well. So let's put it all into God's hands as we start this whole new venture as a church. So let's just pause and pray for a moment. Lord God, we just thank you for the opportunity that you're giving us here. We just pray for our nation right now and all the uncertainty and the fear out there. We just pray that what we're doing as a church, what other churches are doing across the nation, will just bring peace and your love and your grace into our communities. We just want to commit this service into your hands right now. We just pray that as we all tune in together, that Holy Spirit, you would be leading us, you'd be guiding, you'd be speaking to us. Thank you, Jesus, in your mighty name. Amen. Cool. We are stoked to have Dr. Melody with us. Um, her and her husband, Mark, are a big part of our church, and they've recently had a little baby. Congratulations. Thank you. Little, little Thea. She's very cute. Um, and when Melody is not uh, busy being a mum, she is a GP, and she works locally at the medical centre. And so we thought that she would be the perfect person to ask a few of our curly questions around this coronavirus So, firstly, Melody, um, what is this COVID-19 thing? It's got a pretty fancy name. What's it all about? Well, thank you for having me here, Alana. So, COVID-19, it stands for Coronavirus Disease 2019. So, coronavirus is a family of viruses that have been known to cause symptoms like the common cold. But what we know about COVID-19 is that it's a new isolate of the coronavirus that was first uh, found out about last year in 2019. And it's thought to have originated from animals. And so that's now been passed on to humans and since spread around the world. Okay, so it's not COVID-20, it's COVID-19. COVID-19, awesome. Um, so there's been times where I've taken my kids to the doctors or if we're unwell or whatever and thinking that I might get some antibiotics um, but a doctor's just said it, you've just got a virus and it's got to run its course and you'll be fine. Mm-hmm. So what's the difference between these sorts of viruses and this COVID-19 um, and the symptoms around that and mm-hmm. if I think I've got it, what do I do? Okay. So COVID-19 is a virus and what that means is that there is no treatment, so it's not something that can be treated with antibiotics. The symptoms may be quite similar to other viruses like the common cold, so people can present with a cough, a fever or shortness of breath and they may even develop complications that can lead to pneumonia and the symptoms associated with that. So it can be a little bit tricky to know whether you have COVID-19 or whether you've actually just got the common cold or even flu season's coming up so you may even have the flu. If you're not sure, the most important thing to do is to contact either your local GP or the health line. So don't just rock up to your medical centre because they will not like that. Um, But if you call ahead of time, you'll be able to talk to a doctor or a nurse and they'll be able to advise you on what steps to take from there. Cool. Okay. So you've obviously got um, a newborn baby. Mm. Are you worried about that affecting her health? Um, And who does this kind of most affect? Who's most at risk Mm. here? Yeah, so, I mean, what health professionals know about this virus is that if it does impact children, it does result in usually a more mild illness. So um, it's still a good idea to keep your children away from anyone unwell, um, but we do know that they probably would recover if children did get this. Um, That's good news. Yes. Sorry, what was the other part of that question? (laughs) Um, uh, Just who's at most? 
most at risk here. Yes, so uh, the vulnerable groups are those who are over 60 years of age, yeah. um, those who have immunosuppression. So if, you're, if you know your immune system is not working in the best way because of medication that you take or because of a medical condition that you have, and also if you have an underlying medical condition like diabetes or lung disease or heart disease, you also might be at risk as well. So if you fit that category, it is best to take precautions and stay away from anyone unwell. Okay, that's cool. I, you've possibly answered some of this question anyway, but um, obviously the government has made some pretty dramatic um, kind of rules and things, um, being that they've, they've closed borders, they're encouraging that self-distancing. Um, <laughs> it's all good, I don't have it on good. <laughs> um, and they've restricted groups right to under 100. Um, but is there anything else that we really should be doing to help look after our families and each other? To stop yeah. getting this, this disease. Yeah, so that's a really good disease. question and because there is no treatment for this virus, prevention is key. So there's a few steps or measures that we can take and the first one of those is staying at home or that whole concept around social isolation. So if you don't need to be going out and socialising, it probably is best to stay home. But if you do need to go out, then keeping that distance, that two metre distance apart is a good idea. So we know the virus is transmitted by what's called respiratory droplets so the virus is that spit yes in pretty much terms? virus and saliva <laughs> yeah. so if someone was to cough or sneeze in your direction keeping that two meter distance means you're less likely to actually come into contact with it right so that's where that distancing comes yes in. yep and yeah. then also just basic hygiene measures like washing your hands mm -hmm and um, avoiding touching your face. So if your hands did come into contact with a surface that had been contaminated, you get rid of that virus by washing your hands and you reduce that risk of transmission if you don't touch your mouth or your nose. Sure. So it doesn't even matter if we're washing our hands with cold water or hot water or so special soap. The or recommendation <laughs> is wash your hands with soap for 20 seconds. Okay. Or you can use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Yeah. Sweet. Um, now, obviously, you're a Christian and you're a doctor. Do you have a different perspective or kind of outlook on this than maybe others would? How, how do you take that um, from yeah. your angle? So I think, I mean, it is, it is important to listen to the health advice that is out there. But also, as Christians, we know that we serve a great God and he is in control. And... I guess with all the media, there's been a lot of anxiety that's come about, um, a, a lot of dramatising. I mean, it is a really big deal and it has spread throughout the world. So there is warrant to worry. But I think as Christians, we can release those worries to God. And the Bible does talk about um, prayer, presenting our, well, not being anxious and presenting our prayer and our requests to God and letting that peace follow through. And I think that we need to be praying. We need to be praying for people affected, people in self-isolation, our health professionals and also our, our leaders making decisions around this. But I think the fact we know that there is a God out there and he's a, he's a good God and he, he loves us and he cares for us, that we don't, we don't have to be anxious through all of this. Yeah, Awesome. No, absolutely. Great advice there. Thanks, Melody. Um, obviously, this is a really fast-moving situation and there'll be some more questions that pop up. Um, over the next few weeks, I'm sure. So um, we'll keep bringing those to you, <laughs> and um, that'll be that'll be great. Great, thanks, thank Melody. you. Well, wasn't that a great interview with uh, Dr. Melody? Awesome, such good uh, advice, and especially the part about trusting God through all of this. And now we're going to go into a time of of having communion together, and just remembering that actually what Jesus has done for us is bigger than all of this that's going on today. I just encourage you to. Um, Gather together with your families. You might like to get some bread and some juice ready now. And just uh, Kanika's going to come and share a communion thought for us. And as a family, you can just take this in your own time. And if you need to, you can pause the, the recording and uh, then we can, we can pick it up after. So Kanika, would you like to come and just bring some thoughts for us now? Um, I'm going to be talking about um, the feeling of being alone. So in Psalm 48, verse 14, it says, God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even to the end. Um, John 14, verse 27 says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. And do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. 
Yeah, so both of these verses are talking about God's peace and um, that we never have to feel alone because God will always be with us. Um, when I was about four years old, um, I, my mum used to take me grocery shopping and one time we did and um, I was just following along her and with her and um, yeah, I probably got distracted or something and eventually I couldn't see her anywhere and I, was, I felt lost in the supermarket. Um, yeah, uh, everyone at some stage feels alone. Uh, for some people it might just be you feel alone when um, no one is around you and for others it might be like you feel like no one understands what you're going through. And even as a four-year-old, I knew the feeling of feeling alone in the supermarket. But um, soon enough, I found my mum and everything was all good. Um, sometimes when we lose, uh, when we feel lost or we feel alone, it's because we get distracted by something and we lose track of God. Just like I was, like, just like I lost track of my mum when I was in the supermarket. Uh, because, because I got distracted by like some lollies or something. Um, yeah, so we know that Jesus died for us on the cross so that we can have a relationship with him. He is always listening to us and he is ready for us to find him so we, that we never have to feel alone or lost. And when we have that relationship, we need to make sure that we don't lose sight of him because God never wants us to feel alone. Wow, what, a, what an awesome thought, Kanika. Thank you for that. Just at home now, I just encourage you to take the communion together with your family. And uh, let's just pause for a moment, shall we, and just, uh, just thank Jesus for what he's done for us so that we can have peace and know that we're not alone in times like this. So, Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you, Jesus, that you went to the cross to heal all our diseases and our sickness and help us to, to stay not lost but found in you. And so, Jesus, we, we thank you for your love for us and your goodness. And I just pray that your blessing and peace would be with each of us and each family as we take communion together now. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Kanika. Now we will uh, move to the news and uh, it will be on as normal. So tune in for the team. Feeling good, like I should When in Durku, walk around the neighborhood Feeling blessed, never stressed Got that sunshine on my Sunday bed Hi Church, welcome to Surfside Jews. I'm Mark And I'm Kanika And wherever you are, we hope that you're healthy and safe And yeah, here is Surfside News so tonight at 7pm, don't go to Tiuku, but tune in online. We have Tiaro Moxim speaking. He's an incredible doctor, teacher, learner, and he's filled with faith, and he's got some really good stuff to teach us tonight. So at present, as it stands, we still have life groups this week, but be in contact with your leader to find out where it's going to be and what it's going to look like. At the moment, all of our midweek activities are still continuing. So that includes um, mainly music, flipped, youth, food bank and counselling. Just in case any of that changes, keep up to date with our Facebook page, our Instagram page or the Surfside website. Until next time, stay healthy. I've been Kanika. I've been Mark and see you again soon. Well, once again, thank you everyone for joining in online with us this morning. And uh, a special wel welcome, especially to those of you that have never been a part of Surfside. It's just awesome to have you here with us today. With, you know, with all the things going on right now, and there's so much bad news around, I just thought I'd, I'd just mention a couple of good things that are happening. First of all, as a church, you know, we've been praying for Steve lately, now for quite some time, but just last week, he got the news that the tumour is shrinking and surgery is now an option for him. So isn't that good? So let's, let's keep praying for Steve and Alan. And of course, we might be self-isolating and feeling a bit restricted right now. But remember, God is not self-isolating. He's everywhere and he's still at work. And in times like this, he's actually at work more than ever. 
But anyway, just I just wanted to mention also, some of you may notice I'm not on my own here. We've got some of our team that have been helping to set up and make this all happen and some of the key leaders. So it's, it's awesome that I've got just a little bit of a, a support going on this morning. So anyway, recently as a church, we've been looking at the book of Ephesians. We've been learning from it, and today we're going to continue with that. So I just ask my wife Cheryl to come and pray for God's blessing on this word before we, we get into it. Thank you, Ben. Cool. Let's all pray. Father, I thank you that you are a good God, and even though we're separated as a church right now, Lord, that you can still speak to us. Lord, I thank you that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever, and you don't change even though we're in a changing situation right now. And so, Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit will speak to us. Lord, we, we want to have open hearts and minds for, for what you've got, the word that you've got for us right now. And so we just commit this time to you, and and we're excited about what you're you're going to say to us, so we just thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, we're going to dig, dive right into Ephesians chapter 2, reading from verses 19 to 22, just where we left off last week, actually. And the very first word in this is consequently. And if you remember back to last week, the Apostle Paul was talking about the dividing wall, the barrier that sometimes become, comes between groups of people. Of course, he was talking about the Jews and the Gentiles, and he was saying those dividing barriers, those dividing walls of separation between people and people groups, God wants them smashed down. So that's where, consequently, that's where we're picking up from. You are no longer, once we've got those things sorted out, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Now, I was, uh, I was thinking about those verses. And when you consider the words and the phrases that the Apostle Paul uses in those few verses. He uses words like God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation. In, in him, the whole building rises to become a holy temple. And in verse 22, he goes on to say, being built together to become a dwelling. It's clear that Paul is speaking to the people or the Christians at Ephesus, not just as individuals at this point, but he's speaking to them now as a group. So far, he's been hinting that there's more than just an individual relationship that we have with God. But, but here he throws it wide open. And, it, and the focus shifts as we read through the book of Ephesians to the fact that Paul is actually, and God is wanting to emphasize the fact that we're a church family together. And uh, so this is, the, this is where we're heading over the next few weeks. And, he, and Paul compares the church in this little part in Ephesians chapter 2 to a building which has a foundation. It also has people being built together, and it has Jesus as the cornerstone. There's, it's a visual picture with three separate parts, and we're going to look uh, more closely at those as we go through this. Just keep that visual picture that Paul has given us of the church as a building. And in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, Jesus himself spoke about the church as something he would build. And when he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. You know, we need to realize that Jesus is building us together as his people. Even though we're not physically able to be together this morning, we're still one in God's eyes. And it's really important that we understand that. In the spirit, God sees us as one people together. And not even the gates of hell, which is the most formidable spiritual forces in the unseen realm, Jesus said we'll stop his church from growing, even in this season. You know, we're going to move ahead as God's people. And there's a oneness in the spirit that we can have that will uh, sustain us. And uh, we need to understand that no obstacle will stop God's purpose. And that includes this coronavirus, COVID-19. And, and this, I want to say this virus, is, it's only a temporary thing. 
you know, as God's people and his family, we're going to get through this. And, you know, if we're careful and follow some of the guidelines that uh, Dr. Melody mentioned, we, and we're going to come out the other side of this because we've got faith as well. There may be some inconveniences, especially if people start to do get sick around us financially. We could be going into some challenging times. But I just want to say to you guys, let's not lose our confidence right now because God will sustain us. And he is bigger than any of this that's going on right now. And I just, I just want to tell a little farming story just to encourage you guys this morning. Got to put in a farming story. You know, we've been through a dry spell. Now, most of you will be aware of that. And we've had almost actually no rain since Christmas. For most of you, you've been thinking, man, this has been a great summer. We've just had so much outdoors time to enjoy. But for us farmers... We've actually been in quite a serious drought, and uh, it's, been a, it's been a real struggle. But now, you might have noticed, we're starting to get some rain at last. Isn't that awesome? Wasn't it, wasn't it so good on Friday morning, early morning, to hear that rain, that heavy rain on the roof? We haven't heard that for so long. That was just so good and so encouraging. You know, yesterday, I was out, out on the farm, and I noticed that the paddocks are starting to change colour. There's little green shoots coming up all over the place. There's new grass coming. And I looked and I noticed that actually this was, this was grass that had grown from seeds that were lying in the ground and they're already about this high. And I was just amazed to see that the new life is sprouting and growing and we've got, at last, we're moving, beginning to move through this, this dry season that we've been in now for months. And, uh, you know, sometimes when we're in the middle of something, Something that seems to be only getting worse. You know, we can ask ourselves, where's this going to end? Is, this, is the whole world going to close up and lock down? Is it going to be a recession that turns into a depression? And, you know, how bad is this going to get? And will it ever end? You know, when we're in the middle of something, sometimes we feel like that because we don't know just where it's going to finish. But just as every drought, I just want to say this to you guys this morning, that, and just as every dry season always comes to an end, so will this virus. And actually, I'm praying and I'm believing that it's going to be a short season that we're in with this thing. And and over the next few months, and it's going to be quicker, I believe, than what most people even think it's going to be. We're going to get through it. So through this time, let's make it a priority to really look out for one another, especially those that might be on their own right now. And and there's others, too, that are newer to to church and newer to faith. You know, we need to keep an eye on those guys and just make sure they're doing okay. And it might be some of our neighbours that need a little bit of encouragement. I I don't know about you guys, but I've noticed just in the last few days that whenever you're out and about, people seem to want to stop and have a little bit of a chat. Sure, we keep a little bit of a distance, but I think people are more open and there's uh, just a, a real need for people to have a wee bit of relationship just one-on-one in a, in a good sensible space. So let's make the opportunities to, to look out for each other and make that a priority. And keep praying. As, as Melody said, you know, we need to keep praying for good to come out of this. And remember, even in this time when we can't all get together, Jesus is building his church. So let's look at what the Apostle Paul encouraged the Ephesians to remember, thinking back to that visual picture of a building that had a foundation, first of all. In verse 20 in Ephesians chapter 2, Paul said, this foundation is built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. What does this mean? Well, this is the foundation to our faith. You know, the church is built on God's champions who have gone before us. The apostles were mostly Jesus' disciples. They'd been with Jesus for about three and a half years. They'd seen him crucified, but they also saw him alive again. And they knew that he really had risen from the dead, and they believed in him, and they were changed men. And later, Paul was was added to them as well, even though he wasn't one of the early disciples. Between these guys, they wrote most of the New Testament that we still have and read today. And the prophets, who were they? Some of them may have been New Testament prophets that this was relating to, but mostly I think it was the Old Testament prophets. And often the Old Testament is referred to as the law and the prophets, the book of God. So I believe what God is talking about here as our foundation 
as his people. The foundation of the church is God's word, the Bible. And it's, uh, let's make reading God's word a priority in this season that we're in. And it will give us faith and confidence to keep moving forward as God's people. So that's number one thing. And also think about the Apostle Paul as, as an apostle and his example. You know, think about, we've talked about this over the weeks. That there he was, a prisoner in Rome, under house arrest, chained for most of the time to a Roman soldier, miles away from his friends, and his, particularly his friends at Ephesus. And uh, he, he was isolated. He was alone. He was awaiting trial and possibly execution. He didn't know when or where this was going to take place. And, and he was facing a lot of uncertainty, whether he was going to even live or die. You know, in that situation, Paul could have felt depressed. He could have felt down. He could have thought, oh, poor me. Why am I in this terrible situation? He could have got stressed and fearful and started to, to look inwards. But instead, you know what Paul did? He actually had an outward focus. And he was thinking about others, and he was doing what he could to help others at that, at that very time when he was struggling himself, even let, writing letters to encourage and uplift the churches. During the time that Paul was under house arrest in prison there in Rome, he wrote letters to the Ephesians, the Philippians, the Colossians, and Philemon. He wrote four books of the Bible in that time. So he made the most of that opportunity in the situation that he was in. And I'm sure if Paul had the internet, he would have been online in a flash because he did what he could. He wrote letters, and we're doing what we can to get the good news of Jesus out. And I just wanted to mention Philemon particularly. You know, the letter that he wrote uh, to Philemon, it was a really interesting one. It was all about uh, Paul's concern for a runaway slave called Onesimus. And I think this really shows Paul's heart. You know, there he was. He wasn't just worried about himself, was he? He was concerned about a slave who um, was could be treated badly. And that's, that's the sort of heart I believe God wants us to have as we go through the situation that we're in. We, we are facing challenging times, and people are nervous, and some people are, are going to feel isolated and alone, and they're going to need us. And I just want to encourage you guys, let's be like Paul and think of those that are least. Not, not just thinking about ourselves and hoarding stuff and worrying about our own family and so on. Let's start thinking about others because that's the example that the apostle has left us. Yes, yes. Secondly, this building that we're a part of. Once again in Ephesians 2 verse 20, uh, Paul says, We have G Christ Jesus himself is the chief cornerstone. Jesus is the, the key to everything that in the church. He's the one that holds everything together. Colossians 1 verse 17 tells us that. And nothing is going to crash unless he allows it. Because he holds everything together. Not just the church, but the whole world. Everything that exists. And it's, but especially God's people who are looking to him. You know, Jesus has got us in his hands in this hour and at this time. And he's got purposes for us to fulfill, guys. Yeah. And we need to take <laughs> the opportunities that he's giving us. We're not going to get sick and die. We're not going to go broke over this because we have a God that's bigger than that. And remember, Paul was talking, <laughs> talking about here, first of all, the foundation, which is God's word, the Bible, Let's keep reading it. Let's keep building our faith. I just want to say to you guys, you know, if we spend all of our time through this watching the news and keeping up with everything that's happening around the world, we're going to start getting depressed. We're going to start getting down and fearful and wondering, you know, what's going to happen next. But if we, we need to be informed. We need to be aware of what's going on. But we also need to be uh, keeping our eye on God's Word and reading that and having our faith lifted and getting encouraged and realizing that actually God has got people through much worse things than this in the past, and he's going to get us through it as well. Thirdly, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 22, and in him you two are being built together to become a dwelling that God lives in by his spirit. You know, the third and final part of this building that Paul was talking about is God's spirit. 
the Holy Spirit in you and me. That's in us as people. Right now, we all need wisdom, don't we? We all need insight. We all need revelation. Probably now more than ever before, just how to, you know, how to manage our lives, whether we should be involved with this or doing that or going there or, or what we should be doing. We need that revelation and insight. And guess where that comes from? It comes from the Holy Spirit. And he is available to us. And he, we have a helper who's just waiting to help us if we invite him to and ask him to help us. And that's the Holy Spirit. And he wants to give us power to overcome anything that might come against us. So we have, we have the foundation, which is the Word of God. And we have Jesus, who is the cornerstone, who's holding everything together. And we have the Holy Spirit in us, who is building us up into an awesome uh, building for God in, in his house. That's, that's a picture of his church. And it's not, just, it's not a physical building as such. It's a, a building in the spiritual. And it's just something really, really awesome. And so as a church, I believe this is our time. This is, let's make the most of the opportunities that we have right now. Because, you know, the Holy Spirit, he is available to us. Jesus is available to us right now at home. You could be asking Jesus into your life and asking for his help. You could be asking the Holy Spirit just for uh, a fresh infilling, some inspiration and revelation of what to do. And he will help us. Because we've got a good God who's for us and he wants us to get through this with our heads held high and being able to help others and not worrying about ourselves. So bless you guys. That's my word to you today. I think we should, perhaps we should just close with a word of prayer today. And let's just pray for God's blessing and his peace on us as his people in this season. So let's just pray. Lord God, we just thank you just that you're with us every day. We thank you for your love. We thank you that you are our Father, and you're going to get us through this. But more than that, Lord God, I just thank you that you've given us a foundation for our lives. That's your word that never changes. I thank you that you've given us a Savior. That's Jesus, who actually is like the cornerstone of our whole life. And I thank you as well that we have the power of the Holy Spirit living within us. And right now, I just pray for a fresh impartation of the Holy Spirit on God's people. I just pray for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit over our community right now and over our nation. Lord God, I just pray that this season, that enemy has intends for harm, that you would turn for good and there'd just be a real turning to you and your love and your goodness and your grace in these days that we're in and you would build your church strong. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, bless you guys. Thank you for listening. And I just want to say, if anybody would like some prayer, if anyone would like someone to talk to, we've got pastors and we've got leaders in our church that are available. I just want to encourage you to, maybe you could send an email to the church and say, hey, I'd just like some one-on-one time with somebody. I'd like some prayer. I'd like some counseling with Marie. And we can make an appointment for you to, to actually uh, have some time. Maybe you'd be happy to do something over the phone. We could do that as well. But, you know, we're available for, for you guys at the moment and for your friends and for others in the community. And we all need to be there for each other. But first of all, you know, as, as pastors, we're wanting to help. Well, I'll bless you guys. Have, a, have an awesome day and a great week. Don't forget tonight, we've got Andy interviewing Tiaro online. It's the normal Tiuku service will also be online. And so don't, don't miss that. Go and relax, enjoy a cup of tea with your families and have, enjoy the rain and have a great day. Bless you.